Well, no golf shot's that important, is it? But I mean, really I'm focusing on the one or two uh, key things that I've been focusing on that day or that week, should they have lasted that long. It's as simple as that, really. You know, you've got to try and treat it like any other shot, which is difficult sometimes, but you've really got to try and approach it that way and just focus on one or two key things that have, that have got you to that point. And if something's got you that far, then there's a good chance it can get you even further, i.e. winning or, or certainly hitting good shots under pressure. So you've got to, you've got to keep doing the same thing that you've been doing and not, and not lose faith in it, I suppose. Recently, it's been a couple of swing thoughts that have been quite consistent now for me for the last two months, I would say. Uh, it's been a uh, backswing thought, although I haven't really thought about that in my golf swing. I've tried to do that in my routine and a lot in my practice, expecting that to carry over, therefore not have to think about it. And it's actually been one where I've tried to, when my shoulder hits my chin on the backswing, just try and get my head to move to initiate the downswing. And that's really been it, you know, and, and to trust that. And, and also for me to stay on my right side, that's something that I struggle with. So it's those three things that I've focused on now for the last two months. And, and if I hit a bad shot, then I try and analyse the bad shot, think, where did that come from? Why have I done that? And then just go back to one of those three things. And by and large, it's, that's been a fairly successful method so far. Pros are constantly fine-tuning their game, but what should the average golfer do? What do a lot of amateurs struggle with, I suppose, they, they, they stay quite left-sided, you could say, so I'd say, you know, move off the ball, give yourself some time. Uh, that normally is a, is a fairly good thing to try and achieve if, if you're an amateur and not as flexible as, I don't know, uh, Adam Scott. Um, also, they'll have the same type of process whereby they've been thinking about something all day or for a period of time, and that's given them a certain shot pattern, and then, you know, just work back to that, work off that thought and, and not flutter about not tinker with too many things, not try and think about you know the universe or anything stupid. Just think about those one or two things that uh, have, have helped you there and, and just keep doing that, you know, and, and then maybe get a lesson after a few rounds and, and see what the process is, I suppose. OK, so we're now down on the range and I'm going to talk you through um, one drill I use and the reason I use it. Um, firstly, the drill uh, and this is, this is the drill I use when I'm practicing and I'm hitting most of my balls. I probably use this drill 70 to 70% 70 of the time uh, when I'm actually hitting the ball. So uh, you'll see I start with a club actually on the outside of the ball and then I do a preset basically to set my right elbow in the correct position. And then I take it up and I reroute it down on the inside and try and hit fades. And the reason I do that, first and foremost, is to set my elbow, like I said, in the correct position. I take it up to then reroute my arms come more closer to my body. It keeps my hips quieter, it keeps me a bit taller in my right side, and it enables me to stay nice and in the correct posture and as I open up through to hit the fade. So I feel like that particular drill, that particular drill feeds three or four very important habits in my golf swing, which then I take on to the, to the golf swing, obviously. Um, now the reason I do that, uh, and the primary reason with the takeaway, is that if you were to see that drill in slow motion, uh, you would see that my arms stay under my chest on the takeaway very nicely. So I'm very quiet in my whole body except for the club and the arms that are moving. What I've noticed, what me and my coach have noticed is when I do that well on the golf swing, the rest kind of takes care of itself when I go out there with you know, a very simple shot pattern and one that I'm comfortable with and I can play good golf. When I start to get a little quick with my body and open up, I get more this position and then I lose all the sequence in and I can start hitting it both directions. So we, f we feel that that drill is very good at um, making sure that I'm getting all the right things done uh, with my takeaway in particular. So I'll go ahead and hit one. So that's, that's really it, you know, that, that drill is something that I go back to, I've been going back to for three or four months now. Um, and seems to just have a nice crossover to the golf swing for me. So uh, yeah, it's something I've done religiously. Okay, so we're actually on the fairway now and I've got a six iron in my hand and I'm gonna talk you through a particular type of shot that I enjoy playing a lot and one that's uh, obviously useful in the wind. Um, and that's because it's a shot whereby I bring the flight down quite a lot. It's not so much a punch shot, but it's, uh, it's kind of in between, it's not a fully a full 100% or 95% speed shot with a, with a regular iron. It's, it's bringing the speed down to kind of 80%, which brings the flight down, um, and therefore the, the carry comes back a bit. I enjoy hitting this shot because I feel like I've got a lot of technical uh, control over this, over this shot, and I'll just go through a couple of things I do in my setup um, before hitting the shot. So 
First and foremost, I grip down it, probably half an inch to an inch on the grip, as you can see there, so see it coming out there. The stance will be a fraction narrower, so it won't be a fully wide stance, it'll be a bit narrower, helps me get more in the shot, or at least I can feel that. And the ball position will certainly not be forward, it'll be more like middle, middle even towards back of my stance, but more like the middle of my stance. And then really, you know, I'm just gonna feel like I'm covering the ball with my body. That was a bit skinny, which hurts on this cold day. But I'll hit it one more time. So again, grip down it, narrow stance. So yeah, that, that's about a 75% speed shot. Um, so it brings the flight down, great in the wind, and um, yeah, you know, useful shot, certainly for us guys playing in the UK, and something that I look forward to using on the tour. Okay, so we're now in the bunker and uh, I'm just gonna go through uh, a little process that I would use when I'm practicing to help me make sure, again, a bit like earlier, that my, all my basics and my setup are correct to help me hit a better bunker shot. So you'll see here, uh, the target's there. First thing what I do is I draw a line directly behind the ball, just like that. And then I'm gonna set up with my feet slightly open to the target. Um, so I'll draw a line just like that to, so that I've got my little cross, my reference. And you'll see in my heel, my feet, left foot slightly open, my heels on this line, my toes slightly out. I'm then gonna set the club behind. I'm gonna put some weights or into my left, left side. And when I look down, I can now see that this shaft is not in front of the line. It's in fact behind the line, okay? So I've got my weight forward and left, down and, down and left. I've got the, the shaft actually behind my hands. And I'm gonna try and strike the ball somewhere about an inch behind, actually behind the ball in this case. So that's a basic drill I go to in terms of setup when I'm struggling out of bunkers, because I find that if one of those things gets off, then you can really lose the strike. And the one thing you don't want to lose in the bunker is the strike. Um, so you can see I've actually delivered that really nicely, about an inch behind the ball. If you think the ball was there, you can see I've just begun to hit the sand there. Okay, so I've hit the first shot, which has gone probably 12 to 15 yards on a nice strike, which is perfect. Now I'm going to try and hit a longer bunker shot, though, using the same club, which in this case is a lob wedge. So setup remains the same. You can see my left foot is still in this position, um, except this time, as opposed to striking it there, I'm going to try and stroke it a little bit, strike it a little bit further behind the ball. And the reason is to help the ball have less spin on it, so it releases when it's on the ground. Okay. And other than that, not a lot changes. The hand's still behind the ball. It's not in front of it. It's still behind. Except this time, I might square the club face up a little bit, so it's less open. It's more square. But other than that, it's the same sort of movement. It's a flatter flight and it's gone 25 to 30 yards. So to finalize, you've got the ball there, you've got the line here, you've got your foot line. You make sure that your heel is on this line, toe out, weight is forward and left, and the shaft angle has to be behind the ball, not in front of it, it's so important, behind the ball. That enables you to use the bounce of the club, which is the most important part of a lob wedge or a sand wedge when you're in the bunker. OK, so we're down at the putting green and uh, I've got a, a nice drill to show you guys. Um, as you can see, there's a, there's a few things going on here, so I'm going to describe them one by one. Uh, first and foremost, just behind this, where this ball was, there's a, there's a black line which I've set up, which is the line to about right edge. Uh, and I know when I set up over the ball, when I match the face to that line, therefore my face alignment is correct. So that's number one aspect of this drill, if I put the ball back. Uh, there's this shaft on the outside, which sits on the toe side of the putter, which is there for two reasons. Firstly, it acts as, the, um, as a path drill and make sure that my putter stays inside the path and never goes outside. If, I, if it was to go outside, obviously I would hit the shaft, so that tells me that I'm taking it on the outside, something which I have a tendency to do and uh, no great putters ever do, so you don't want to do that. It's also there and it acts as a gate drill with this other tee, so um, the traditional gate drill where you'd put two tees, which you've seen Tiger Woods do and probably have done yourself at some time in the past. Um, it also acts as that, so it may, basically means the putter face is coming back in the right position, it's not rerouting. And then finally, this alignment stick is just there simply as a ball position aid um, to make sure that my ball position is always uh, where I want it, which is pretty much directly under the centre of my sternum. So, uh, yeah, they're the aspects of the components of this drill and uh, 
Let's go ahead and hit a couple. So I feel like they were quite good putts. Um, didn't hit, you know, I didn't hit any of the tee. I didn't hit the, uh, the shaft. That tells me the stroke was really quite good. Um, yeah, it's a 20 foot putt, so you know, you're know you gonna get some variance with the roll. But uh, yeah, this is a drill I use on a daily basis when I'm out on tour and when I'm home as well, just to cover all the basics and the uh, important aspects of putting that I find I sometimes struggle with and wanna always get right.